Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Designer Studio episode. Today we're taking a closer look at the minifig of the month. This is kind of a special one because it's releasing over Black Friday weekend, kind of getting the, the center stage. Um, and today only, when you get in on the first batch of Rosie the Riveter minifigs of the month, uh, you can get a free 1x2 Allied Star Tile included with your purchase. Nice. So if you were planning on picking up Rosie anyways, go ahead and get that. Um, it is limit one per customer, but hey, you know, if you're picking up one, you get one. If you're picking up five, you get one. There you go. That's how it works. It's fun. Sure. But Rose now let's Riveter. dive in. Yeah, now let's dive in a little bit more to these actual figures because we've got a lot going on here. Different 3D printed elements, yeah. brand new artwork, some unprecedented printing. Unprecedented. I've been really just to, a, uh, an awesome undertaking. Yeah, thank you. And on, beha on behalf of the uh, entire team, you know, it's it's been a, this is a crazy project. This is kind of the coming together of a lot of different departments. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most difficult print jobs uh, on, on, diff on several different fronts, right? Um, so we're just kind of pumped that this all came together. I've been wanting to make a Rosie minifigure for quite a few years, so it's, mm -hmm. it's exciting that we're finally at the capability where we can do this uh, the way that we wanted to do it. Um, previously, we are kind of toying around with like, well, what if we printed like a Lego pirate cap or mm -hmm. something? Just the options weren't quite there, but now with this 3D printing uh, to uh, the place that it's at and with our modeling capabilities, um, I think we're doing, we're making this Rosie figure um, the way we wanted to make it. Uh, so we're doing justice to this. Um, rivet gun, uh, that's a designed in-house, printed in-house, um, everything. Uh, really cool rivet gun um, to go with this minifigure to kind of get that uh, iconic look to it. Maybe some, you know, inspired by the Norman Rockwell poster, obviously. Yep. And then uh, the um, the other... The, the, the Rosie 2. Rosie 2 figure, the mm -hmm. poster. Um, I like the, I really like the over-the-shoulder look. Yeah, just the, just the way that 3D element fits with the minifig. You know, yep. it happens all the time with perfect calibers or or, or, or just brick arms, whatever stuff in general. Um, you know, you put it in the minifig hand, and you're kind of like, huh? I wish I could just like angle sure. it a little certain way, whatever. These these sit really really nicely yeah, the way you want them to look. You can you can clearly tell that this is, this uh, rivet gun was intentionally designed to work perfectly with a with a minifigure. It's right. not just a scaled down uh, real life version. This is actually um, really well made for the Lego universe. So mm -hmm. good job. Camera guy, good job, uh, Amanda. Right, you guys both worked on that, right? Or is it with just you? Or is it? It's a collective thanking of the department. They both do wonderful work. Okay. Yes. So uh, nice job to the uh, 3D print department uh, designing this and making this. Uh, then moving up to the other 3D printed element elements. Actually, there's two of them. Uh, would be this uh, scarf um, or bandana on the uh, on the head, covering up that hair. So the hair is printed separately, uh, and that is. Um, fixed in place, just uh, glued in place permanently, and um, attached to that bandana to get that kind of really iconic sort of hair swirl. Um, and uh, then it is printed with UV printing to get these polka dots. Um, it's like four uh, four different print surfaces. Uh, On just the headpiece. Just the headpiece. Just the headpiece, yeah. four <laughs> different print surfaces. So get that nice little iconic polka dot uh, pattern going on there. Um, and that's four different passes. Mm -hmm. You know, like you got to understand a little bit of how much, it, it, like, just different manipulating of these small elements yeah. goes into each one of these these minifigures, and then imagine that spread out across at least four different departments from design sure. to completion, and then all the way through customer service. And this again, um, this is one of the more challenging print jobs. Um, just working with this color, it's a it's a slightly, I guess, darker substrate. Um, so the arms, short sleeves, uh, that's that's always one of the most challenging things. So you can kind of see where there's there's spots where it's you know it's not 100% perfectly lined up, but we are again trying to register three different print surfaces. So we're printing the front of the arms from the front, the side is a separate print, and then the back we're printing at the same time. This is a challenge, um, but overall I, I, this is one of my favorite minifigures. Um, it's it's just such a eye catching um, the color contrast with the, you know the red socks. Mm -hmm. um, just going over some historical photographs um, and. Uh, it just, it's just an interesting, you know, obviously a piece of, piece of history um, behind all this, you know, uh, women stepping up and helping out with the war efforts um, and uh, doing jobs that were traditionally held by, uh, you know, their male counterparts. But um, so it's cool that this, this, you know, World War II, that was just a huge effort by everybody, you know, on all fronts. So um, I think this is a, an important minifigure that we, uh, we finally uh, were able to put together and do justice to. Um, what else, man? What, should, what else should we go over? The the kind of denim pattern mm -hmm. that's a slightly color shifted. So we're starting out with a um, sand blue substrate color, 
and I'm color shifting it a little bit darker in key spots, but then in areas, uh, so in the bottom of the denim jumpsuit, the uh, it's like flipped up. So that's you're actually seeing the true color of the Lego showing through there. So I'm kind of playing with um, the different tones of color shifting and uh, to kind of interesting little, little subtle contrast there, I guess. Um, That's a really cool way to do that. What do you think about it? Yeah. Um, so it's trying to work with the existing color of Lego. This isn't just blasting it to a different color. Mm -hmm. um, what you are seeing through this tint is, is like you're still seeing mostly the Lego color showing through. Um, so it's like, a, it's like a 10 or 20 percent little tint over right. everything. Um, Which is a fairly new technique that the, the UV print, I mean, probably the last year or so has been something that we've actually yeah, been pushing able to really do. hard into that. So it's, it's been mm -hmm. fun. Uh, it's kind of unlocking different colors um, and getting this historically accurate tones that, you know, in the past we were kind of just happy with like, well, this is close mm -hmm. to, the, to the Lego color, to the, whatever Lego color is like, no, this is close. Mm -hmm. But now we can actually kind of dial it in and get the exact color, which is, it's just like every country has their own olive drab. So right. it's, it's it's been a challenge with that one. but. Well, and I like too that you guys aren't just bulldozing the original Lego colors. Sure, you, you right. work with that because you could take a yellow torso and just print, right or print white, the crap out of it and turn it into whatever the heck you wanted to. Right, as long yeah. as you were able to take the time to cover all the surfaces. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you transition that and you look at that on the on the legs, the way you can kind of see that true blue shining through, um, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, what else? Some new face artwork, um, kind of based off uh, posters. Um, got a little bit of makeup going on. Um, on these uh, on the faces, um, kind of to it's a nice cute effect, I guess. So mm -hmm. um, playing around with that new um, new artwork's always uh, it's always fun to try out new things. So um, what else? Uh, there is a pin. It's like a, that's a worker identification pin. So that in sure. in real life, it's like this little metallic disc that uh, was pinned onto the uh, collar or onto a pocket or something. And it's got like their employee number, their name, and a little like black and white picture of their face on that ba on that uh, badge. So I had that kind of simulated in really tiny scale there. Is that in case your factory gets? Well, I th it was probably more security um, mm -hmm. back then. But I, th I I'm, I'm I'm wondering if that was pretty common um, in big factories like that. So. Mm -hmm. I would think so. Anything that would be on a bomber's map would probably be something that you'd want to have a. Make sure. sure you got all your employees taken care yep. of. I know we had to think about that a lot on the home front back sure. in World War II, especially during the early years. We didn't know where it was going to be fought. So. Right, right, right. Um, am I missing anything? I don't know. Kind of far away, hard for me to see. But what do you, what do you, Any other notes? No, this is Three cool. flesh tones, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the Riveter. I think that that... You could definitely have Rosie, especially the V2 Rosie, you could definitely have without a 3D printed Riveter. Um, but I, I really think that that brings a lot together. And I really like that you chose the original. I think that's something that... Uh, yeah, this is sort of a high... Like, this Rosie is a little bit of a hybrid between... Um, Rockwell's that, and V2. The, the, yeah, the Rockwell. And then that poster originally was like d displayed for like two weeks in... Um, Which uh, one? The, the sandwich the, or...? The one with the uh, yellow background. Um, okay. The, that one. I, mm -hmm. That was... From what I could tell, that didn't really gain... Uh, it wasn't as common uh, until maybe like the 70s or 80s. Sure. So if you would have said Rosie the Riveter uh, back during World War II, from what I could tell, um, they would have thought of the Norman Rockwell. Uh, people would have thought of the Norman Rockwell one because that was you know everywhere. Um, whereas that the the poster on the with the yellow background um, that was only just in one factory displayed for two weeks and then kind of put into the archives and then sort of rediscovered later on. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting history. This is a bit of a fusion between the two posters, but um, ultimately it's everything is inspired by the, the real people behind it all. Exactly. So, yeah. Very well said. Very cool figure and excellent deserving minifigure of the month. And remember, today only when you get in on batch number one, uh, you get a free allied star tile uh, included with your order while supplies last. No gimmicks, it just gets automatically added there when you pick up the minifig. Um, so go ahead and take advantage of that today. Get in on batch one, claim your allied star tile, and cap off Black Friday weekend mm. with the new minifig of the month. Absolutely. Anything else to, no. uh, to cover? No. Very, very cool. We'll be back tomorrow to go over the Cyber Monday specials. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.